Welcome to the Crucible of Paint. This is the process I used to batch paint these set of Chaos Furies from Warcry. I painted these figures in about 5 40 minute sessions across a week. I primed all the figures matte black and sprayed a highlight of white ink from above. The first step is very thin down Bugman's Glow all over the flesh areas. I'm thinning with tap water, but any acrylic thinner would have worked fine. I'm using a medium brush and I'm making sure I get everywhere I want to be flesh coloured. I've left the face as I want it to be lighter. I want to take advantage of that highlight I sprayed while priming. There's no need to be neat with this step and I can really flood it on. I'm moving any pooling around with my brush, but as the paint's very watered down it'll dry thin and not clog the details. The first figure had dried once I'd finished the last step on the sixth figure. I can now lay a 50-50 Cadian flesh tone and Kislev flesh, watered down with regular tap water. I don't need to worry about it looking patchy at the start of this step. The bits that are left patchy get covered as I go. Here I'm focusing on surfaces that are not in shadow, and the faces are left unpainted. Again, I don't worry about it being neat at all. I keep in mind that I'm painting creatures, I find the slight inconsistencies from figure to figure actually add to the look of the squad. this step I've mixed Gulliman Flesh Contrast Paint thinned with Reichlin Flesh Shade. I'm shading and smoothing the earlier two flesh layers that I applied. I still don't need to be accurate here, just move the paint about the figure to avoid it pooling. As contrast is thicker consistency, I focus on avoiding it pooling in the detail areas. I do this simply by wicking excess contrast paint away with a slightly damp brush. This step takes much longer to dry than it takes to apply to all the figures. And that's why this is where I finish my first session. Now I'm going to start to make the flesh look decent. I'm using watered down Kislev flesh to start working on the raised areas of flesh. This is the first stage that I want to be somewhat neat. I'm mainly avoiding deep creases and areas of shadow. I also paint this layer onto the bony finger bits on the wings. As the paint is quite thin, I don't want total coverage. I'm just lightening the main areas that should be brighter. Here I'm adding definition to the spine and tail and darkening any areas that look too light. I'm using straight up Reichlin flesh shade and still using a medium layer brush. I'm being careful to avoid the tops of flesh areas and I'm making sure I don't have too much wash on my brush. But realistically if the wash pools anywhere I can just wick it away with a clean and moist brush. This is my second highlight using Kislev Flesh again. This time being careful not to have too much paint on my brush, I'm still quite thinned down with water. 
On areas that I don't want to draw too much attention to, I just add point highlights such as the joints on the wings. I add a fairly broad highlight on the face so I still have further highlights to go here. In this step I'm painting thin Bugmund glow. I'm cleaning up the inside of the wings and giving them a uniform colour. For this step I'm placing a lump of the coarse texture paint, astrogranite debris, and working towards it with the finer astrogranite texture. I'm not going to cover all of the base as I'll be doing a mixed filthy beach type of base to match my existing walk routines. Well I managed to bungle that last shot six times, this is what the texture looks like while drying on the bases. If this takes such a long time to set, I finished that session there. This step was meant to be the base for the beards, which were going to be brown. Once the Rhinox hide had dried though, I wasn't happy with the way it was going, so I paint them black later. This still has a little effect on the final look, but I wouldn't do this again myself. I lightly thin carrot stone so it flows smoothly off the brush, but still has decent coverage. Here I'm hitting the bony spikes, claws, horns and teeth. I don't worry about being too delicate with the teeth, but I do be careful around the skin areas. I'm using lightly thin to shafty bone. This time I'm just hitting the ends of the claws, teeth and spikes, and just as a highlight. With very thin carrick stone on a cheap old brush as the texture paint will be too harsh on decent brushes, I'm working some of the carrick stone into the textured sections. I then add water to the brush to make sure the carrick stone gets into the recesses of the texture paint. It's fine if the top of the textured sections still look dark grey, they'll be covered up again later. I'm using thin Cadian flesh stone in the centre of the underside sections of the wings leaving a fair amount of the brown showing close to the bony parts. While the paint is still wet on the wings, I wash the paint out of the brush, and with a wet brush, spread the water from the bony parts of the wing into the painted area so the wet paint blends into the water. With very watered down Rhinox hide, I paint into the bony bits on the underside wing membrane and a little into the lines in the wings. This needs to be quite focused and watered down. I was a little bit heavy with this step on a few figures and it looks a bit more sloppy than I'd have liked. With lightly thinned ash and grey, I carefully paint the tops of the wing membranes. I work the grey in towards the bony parts with the side of the brush to ease your brush control. Using very thin administratum grey on a brush that I'd partially wiped off on a clean dry napkin, I lightly brush grey on the outside of the wings from front to back. 
trying to get streaky thin lines to fake some texture. As the thin paint dried extremely quickly, I was able to get a second coat onto sections that had not lined as much as I'd wanted. I must say that I'm pretty happy with how this looks on the finished model with such a low effort application. I did a heavy dry brush of a shafty bone onto the base texture using an old brush. Next, I covered the rest of the base using undiluted contrast paint, Agaros Dunes. I applied this into the untextured areas of the base. As the contrast was setting up, I applied a second coat onto the edges between the texture and bare base sections to darken the joint. I just dabbed the contrast into the wet sections, as I didn't want any brush strokes that would move the drying layer, as that changes how contrast dries and you end up with an undesired result. I carefully worked Agrax Earthshade into the teeth and the sections of horns and bones where they met flesh. Now it was time to base the metallics and rebase the beard. I don't have a black Templar contrast paint, but I get a quick result I like using Abaddon Black and Contrast Medium, about one part paint to two parts medium. I use this on all areas I want to have a silver colour or bronze colour for the metallics. I also use this carefully at points where different finishes meet, such as flesh and sand and flesh and stone. It's worth doing this last, with a bit more contrast medium, thinning the paint. I've sped the footage up as I do this quite slowly. Now with thin Trinox hide, I carefully colour the eye sockets. This cleans up the eye area and prepares it for the brighter colours that we'll add later. Using lightly thinned lead belcher, I layer the areas that I want to have a silver or iron finish. This stage of painting I'm jumping around from area to area as I need the sections to dry thoroughly before I work more on that same section again. Here, I'm carefully placing a small amount of lightly thin Troll Slayer Orange into the raised eyeball section of the eye. I'm being careful not to have too much paint on the brush, but if I mess it up badly, I'll wipe away the paint and put some Rhinox Hide back in the eye socket to clean it up. Then I'll try it again. Using lightly thinned warp block bronze, I layer over the sections I want to be bronze or gold. I start those precious metals in the same way, as I find warp block bronze is a great base colour. I mix warp block bronze and auric armour gold about one to one and thin it with water until it flows nicely. And with a good paintbrush, I layer the high points of the gold or bronze metallic areas, avoiding the recesses. I now shade the silver metallics back to a more iron look with some null oil. I also further darken the beard, but here unfortunately from the six pieces of footage I took, 
I managed to get one figure in shot, and you see my thumb again more than anything else. Using Uriel Yellow, lightly thinned with Cassandora Yellow Shade, and a new brush, I shape the tip of the brush by gently rolling it on my palette. I carefully get a highlight in the centre of the orange by using the side of the brush tip, and run it gently across the raised eyeball. Here I use a 3 to 1 mix of Eshin Grey and Administratum Grey on an old brush to roughly highlight the stone on the base. The mix doesn't have to be precise. Using Abaddon Black and Contrast Medium, about one part paint to one part medium, I lightly coat the stone sections of the base. I again get any areas where different materials meet if I need to define those joints more. With Abaddon Black lightly thinned with Nuln Oil, I clean up the rim of the base. The key here is a smooth even coat. I do the entire base rim and then I wait until the previous coat is completely dry before doing a second coat. I do two or three coats at least, as this will be the most touched part of the model. Using blood for the blood god that I've lightly thinned with water, I use an old frayed brush to dab in the paint and apply in the speckled pattern. I gradually add the effect paint to the figure until I get a result I like. I personally go sparingly on bladed weapons, but I like the effect on parts like this figure's arm when it's heavily applied. I think it looks as though it's torn something apart recently. And this is the finished product. I've put two coats of an acrylic varnish on the base rim, just the cheap satin finish from an arts and crafts store, just to protect the heavily handled sections. I hope you got some enjoyment out of watching this. I'll keep working on my filming and editing, and I hope you all get some of those grey plastic minis in your cupboard out, and get some layers on them. Remember with hobbies, you'll get more out of a failed attempt than no attempt at all.